Hi, and welcome to Module 3 of Video Lecture 4. In the previous uh, module, we learned the first of our three rules for differentiation, that the derivative is a linear operator. In this module, we're going to consider the first of our functions that we're going to try to understand, and these functions will be polynomials. Now, we're going to build polynomials up from small bits first, and then show how you can differentiate any polynomial of any type pretty easily. First, um, what I'm going to do here is go through a proof of polynomials when you have differentiating polynomials when all the powers are integers, so x squared, x to the third, and so on. This is a nice intuitive proof and it works pretty well, I think, to go through to give you a sense of how this works. The more general proof is in the textbook. Um, it's a very similar in, in it's a very similar in structure, but I find it a little less intuitive. So I'm going to do this one in this course, and you can look at the the more general proof which is the same exact um, tenor in the book. Okay. So to do this proof, we have to do only really one thing, which is to note that you can expand out any function, um, any power of a function in the pretty much the same way. So if we have x plus h to the zeroth, that's one. x plus h to the first is x plus h x plus h squared equals x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, and so on. The important thing to note, well, first of all, I mean, <laughs> why am I doing this? Well, if I'm going to differentiate any function that's equal to some power of x, which is the component piece of a polynomial, I need to understand how to deal with x to the n, well, the derivative is going to equal x plus h to the n, in that case, minus x to the n over h. So we need to understand how to deal with x plus n to the h. Sorry, x plus h to the n. This pattern, to do it, you can keep going if you want to, or you can note, we noted way back when we did these things in the first place, um, actually, the last lecture, I guess, um, that the terms have different powers in H. And I forgot the important limit here. <laughs> How does this work? Well, the highest power in X is going to cancel with this, right? That X to the N is going to move the highest power of X. All the rest of the terms in here we're going to have lower powers of x and increasingly higher powers of h. What do we do with that? Well, we note that on the denominator here, there's an h. That h is going to divide through and cancel with the power of this expansion that has x to the n minus 1 times h in it. All the rest of the terms of that expansion have higher powers of h, leaving us with, even after dividing by h, we'll still have an h and h squared and possibly h cubes and so on, depending on how big n is. Right. But the one with only one h, the h is going to cancel. Why do we care about that? Well, we care about it because there's a limit. The limit is going to make all terms that have h's in them still go away. That will leave only the terms without h's. But there's only one term without an h, right? Just one term without an h, and that's the very that's the second term in the expansion, right? The first term cancels with x to the n. The second term has a single h in it, right? That's always true for anything first power or higher, right? Here, the second term has an h. The second term has a single h. If we were to go further, um, we can also see, right? Again, all these terms have more and more h's in them, but this second term is the only one with a single power of h. So when you divide through by h, all these terms, this one and this one and any further terms will vanish in the limit, leaving only this term right here. 
And you can see I've had an already, right? Here's h. So this one gives you the derivative of this one equals 1. The derivative of this one equals 2x. We just did that in the previous um, module. This one over here gives you 3x squared. And you can kind of see the pattern here. First of all, the constant here, here, and here, these constants are exactly equal to the original power of the function, right? 1, 2, and 3. Second, the exponents are exactly equal to the original power of the function minus 1. There's 2 over here. There's effectively a 1 over here. And if you recall, x to 0 is equal to 1. So that's there. It even works up top. This derivative of the constant is 0. Well, 0, this is still 0, as long as x is not 0. And this is exactly equal to the, to the um, power up here, to the exponent. And this is the exponent minus 1. And that's it. This is what you typically call the power rule. If f equals x to the n, the derivative of f equals n x to the n minus 1. And that's the power rule. It works for any power. For instance, right, if you had n equals 0, then the function equals 1, and the derivative equals 0, as we just showed on top over here. That's called the constant rule sometimes. But again, it's the exact same rule. It's how to di differentiate an exponent, a power of x. Now this kind of proof we just gave is appropriate for any n that's, a, that's an integer. But it turns out, as you see in the book of this not much more complicated proof, this same rule works for any n, as long as you can actually define the, the underlying function. So for any f that looks like this, for any n, so n equals 1, 2, or 3, n equals 0, n equals negative 1, n equals a half. Any n this will work for, any rational n this will work for. How does this go? How do you end up doing this? Any n. Any n this will work for. So how do you do this? Well, in every case, you pull down the n, and you subtract 1 from the n up here, and you're done. So examples are pretty straightforward for this one, as you might imagine. So if f of x equals x to the ninth, well, f prime of x, the derivative, equals 9x to the eighth. And we don't have to go through the first principles, derivative, and take x, to the, x plus h to the ninth and deal with that, right? We're just done. Um, what else? Well, if f of x equals x to the one half, or right, the square root of x, why then, f prime of x equals 1 half, you pull down the n. Now, what's 1 half minus 1? It's negative 1 half. And we're done. So what you just did is you differentiated. So we learned that the, square root, that the derivative of the square root of x equals 1 half times 1 over the square root of x. That's what x to the negative 1 half means. The negative means you flip it, right? The numerator becomes a denominator and vice versa. And the 1 half just means square root. So there you go. You just differentiated a square root. It took like three seconds. So really, this is actually not that com complicated if you remember only a few small rules. Now, my advice is remember this rule right here, for the power rule. Don't rederive it. You can rederive it. I just wrote over that one. Not very helpful. Um, you can rederive it if you want to, but again, um, it's much easier for you if you remember that rule. It's not that complicated. It comes up a lot. Um, and it's, again, pretty easy to remember. Now, I promise polynomials, though. This is the derivative of powers. How do you deal with the polynomial? Well, as you might guess from the order I've stuck these things in, the previous module said one of the rules for differentiation was that the derivative was a linear operator. We can use that immediately because a polynomial 
is just a linear combination of a bunch of powers, right? So you can write polynomials like this. Right? So here's a polynomial, um, 3x to the 6 plus 2x squared minus 1. There's a polynomial, right? How do we differentiate it? Well, we just said we know how to differentiate this and this and this, right? So this derivative, you, um, sorry, we know how to differentiate this and this and this. Well, we have to do two things. One, we have to deal with the fact there's constants, right? Here's a constant, here's a constant, and the negative one is effectively a constant. We have to deal with those things. And we have to deal with the fact that there's sums, differences between them. But we already know how to do that. In the previous module, we learned that derivative is a linear operator. So if we have, so we can treat this and this and this all separately, multiply each one of these times the constant, and add them all together again. So f prime, and we'll do this in steps, equals the first step, which is to write the thing out. Right, just wrote it out. Now we know we can take all the things that are added and treat them separately. We treated them separately. Now we know we can pull the constants out. This is just one again, so I'm just gonna leave it like this. And now we can use the power rule we just learned to get rid of these things, get rid of these primes. So this is gonna be six x to the fifth, and this is gonna be two x, and this is gonna be zero. And we're done, we just multiply out, and the derivative of this polynomial is 18 x to the fifth plus 4x. That's it. All these polynomials can be differentiated using the combination of the power rule and the fact that the derivative is a linear operator. You can take any sum, any difference of as many powers of x as you want, use that rule, use our power rule, and you can get the derivative of any function no matter how complicated given some addition or subtraction of powers of x. And again, we can do one more real quick. It doesn't matter if they're if n's an integer. If, for instance, f equals um, the square root of x minus one over x, right? That seems like it could be kind of complicated. If you saw this probably before doing this course, you might think, whoa, I can't do that one, right? That's confusing. But if you write it a little differently, it's exactly straightforward. Here, let's even add a three here. Well, this is the same thing as 3x to the 1 half. This is the same thing as x to the negative 1. And you can start to see why we spent time in the pre, in, in the building blocks part of this class, right? In, in the preliminary stuff back in um, lecture 2 to write these functions in different ways. Well, then f prime is equal to the derivative of this. We split it up in the same way as before. We pull out the three in the same way as before. Sorry, that's a positive, apologize. I can't actually erase this thing, which is a, kind of a bummer. Um, and I would differentiate these things. The derivative of x to 1 half, we already did. It was 1 half x to negative 1 half. The derivative of x to negative 1, you pulled in the negative 1. And you take negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And now you simplify. You get 3 over 2 square root of x. 2 minus has become a plus. So you have 1 over x squared. There you go. The derivative of 3 times the square root of x minus 1 over x is 3 over 2x 2 times the square root of x 
plus 1 over x squared. That's it. No matter how complicated, no matter how many powers of x you have in there, you can always split them apart using the fact that the derivative is a linear operator and take the derivative of each one separately using the power rule. And that's it. Um, so now you have a ton of more stuff you can differentiate, and it's only been a couple of modules in. So that's it for this time. Um, next time we'll deal with a new rule. Thank you very much.